And coach, whenever you're ready, take it away. All right. Well, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate the kind words. I kind of, I consider myself to be very fortunate to, you know, when I listen to your podcast and all the places you go visit and the ideas that you get, that's what kind of a lot of this stuff is over 20 years is just me, you know, people let me in their campuses, their film room, uh, stealing ideas, taking it back and slapping, you know, a different logo on it and basically teaching somebody else's concept to, to our players. So I haven't had any original ideas. None of this stuff is an original. I try to give credit kind of when I've got it, when I stole it from somebody, I kind of try to give credit to those people. So you hear some of that throughout uh, this talk. I want to get into the football. There's my contact info. We'll throw it back up again. Uh, I didn't put my Twitter up there, but it's just at Jay Wilkinson, J-A-Y-W-I-L-K-I-N-S-O-N. So uh, like Coach said, we're going to try filming this deal. So I've actually got a tripod with my phone up, zooming this off of a TV. So if something goes haywire, you guys let me know because I'm going to start rambling and, and not really look at my phone. But I'm hoping that it'll cut down on a little bit of the lag, all right? So the first thing kind of in our shots, and for us, we are a kind of a pro style, multiple personnel. We huddle up. Uh, we like to run the football. You know, I've got two old line coaches, Mark Broyles and Rowdy Harper. Uh, you guys have all heard Coach Harper on the Run the Power podcast. So, I mean, we're still traditional. We get up under center with a fullback and a home set. And we run power and ISO and all the plays that, you know, some of you guys think are a myth out there with all the four wide stuff. But we still will do that. So we're kind of the dinosaurs in this deal. Um, but so, so to, to kind of complement that stuff, when we went to throw the football, we were getting loaded boxes. We wanted to throw the ball over the top. So here's just some of the stuff, the ideas that we've had. We'll get into some that's kind of our favorite stuff that we carry every week, and then we'll get into some that are game plan ideas. So the first thing, and I got this from Coach Dunn at OSU, um, but we teach all of our kids landmarks, okay? So starting from the inside out, okay, a lot of times, and, and again, this is just when we're running routes, we give the quarterback and the receiver's point of reference. So we have the right upright and the left right upright. Everybody, everybody knows that. But, you know, I think our kids don't know what those are called a lot of times. So, you know, we teach them what the upright, where it is at. And so, like, if they're running a post and we tell them, to, hey, you're running at the near upright or the far upright, which, which one they're headed to. Then, of course, we use hash as a landmark. One that is kind of a defensive term that, that I got from Coach Dunn is, we will actually call the area between the hash and the numbers the divide, okay? And so I drew a line here, but, you know, it's just not a line. I mean, it could be anywhere kind of here between the hash and the numbers, all right? Then we talk to them about the numbers. Uh, a lot of times this is our initial alignment, uh, but a lot of times we'll talk in terms of bottom of the numbers, the top of the numbers. So, again, we want to teach them where the numbers are at on the football field, uh, that's, again, alignment issue a lot of times. But then also we'll talk in terms of if we're on the fade route or a go ball, hey, we want you on the bottom of the numbers. Or, you know, if, if it's a deal where we can kind of get stacked and we run uh, kind of an outside release deal, we can kind of get stacked and we work them back to the top of the numbers. We want them to know the difference. And then the big one kind of that we've added again, the two on the left are kind of ones that we stole from OSU. But the area, a lot of times you'll see this on an NFL field with a red line. Uh, but the area between the bottom of the numbers and the sideline, we will call the edge, okay? So we'll talk in terms of, you know, into the boundary, a single receiver run a fade, never get outside the edge. I mean, always hold your ground. Give that quarterback between the edge and the sidelines to throw the football. So, you know, that's kind of been big for us and save us a lot of time because now when we say, hey, you know, you're aiming for 25 yards on the opposite divide, the receiver knows now where it's at instead of saying, okay, hey, that area between the hash and the numbers, we're trying to work you over there. And it's, it's been really good for us. One of the ways that we practice our shots is during special teams or during an individual period, I'll take the quarterbacks and let's say we're throwing a ball, uh, which I'll talk about the post here in a second, but we're going to throw the post, let's say 35 yards on the hash. I'll take one of those Gilman nets and I'll the, the drop down net. So you can take a trash can and I'll set it at our landmark where I want the receivers. And usually I use the goal line as a good point of reference. That way they don't have to count. So then the quarterbacks will move. So I'll take the quarterbacks back here. Let's say it's the 35-yard line, and we're under center, and we'll execute a play-action drop, and then we're throwing the ball to that spot where 
we give our landmark on the post. So for us, the post landmark, and I'll talk about this on the next slide, but it's 35 yards on the hash. Okay, so we're gonna drop back, we're gonna put 35 yards on the hash. So to practice these and really kind of develop a little bit of a touch, it's no different to me than a basketball player going out and practicing his threes. As a quarterback, we've got to practice those deep throws. Well, we're not going to throw 100 posts or wide receivers and burn their legs out. So if imagine this is the 35-yard line. We would set here on air. We'd reverse out, fake the power, set up, and then we would throw the ball to the goal line, trying to hit the trash can. We always make it a competition. Um, and then all of a sudden, let's say, okay, we're throwing boundary fade that week. So now we put our quarterback on the left hash. We'll put the trash can out here on the edge where we want our receiver, uh, let's say at 20 yards or 25 yards, somewhere in there. Uh, we kind of vary that depending on who the receiver is. But we'll put it out there, let's say 22-yard line on the edge, and our quarterback will just take a three-step drop and try to throw that thing in, in, in the trash can. We'll give them points, three points if they make it, two if they hit it that type of deal into competition. So we'll say, hey, we're throwing fade, put in the edge, 22 yards, where uh, everybody gets five shots. So first quarterback will get up, throw, second, third, and then we'll just repeat, keep scoring. We have a winner and a loser. And that's kind of how we throw, practice our, our shots and get a lot of shots in and don't have to really burn any of the wide receiver's legs. All right, so to get into football, here's some of our pocket throws. Okay, so our favorite one to teach is double post, okay? So before I get to the post side, I want to talk about the smash side. So smash is kind of our catch-all over here. So if we get a look that we don't like over here, we feel like we can kind of throw smash, and I talk in terms of with our quarterbacks, a security blanket type throw. So if we get a look, let's say we get a middle of the high safety or a real deep safety, uh, or, you know, Coach Gaylor showing the three safety stuff now that we are not going to like the double post. Then we just come back over, and for all of our smash stuff, we're just basically going to read this thing. We're going to read the corner just like everybody in the country does. I tell our kids this is something they learn in seventh grade. If the corner backs up, we're going to bang the hitch. If the corner stays down, then we've got to throw this corner route in there, okay? It's also something we like and teach versus a middle-of-the-field close look. Uh, and we tell them in terms of middle of the field close, we feel like we're going to get two coverages out here. We're going to get cover three or cover one. And so our kids, day one teaching, they get out there and they start looking, okay, it's cover one. I know I'm going to get the corner out in here. Okay, it's cover three. He's going to back up. I've got to bang the hitch right now. So that's kind of our security. But I know everybody wants to come talk about shots. So let's get to the other side. So what we tell the inside receiver is he's going to push up eight yards and break this thing across the safety space, okay, and he is aiming for the far hash at 35 yards, okay? So he's a far hash, and again, that's why the landmarks come into play. We say, hey, push the eight, stick it, aim for the far hash, 35 yards, you got to cross the safety space. Okay, the outside post is the, the throw that we want. We're going to work 10 yards up the field, and we're going to work to 35-yard line on the hash. Now, again, I think that goes to wide receiver's ability in your quarterback's arm. Uh, if you've got some kids who can really run the quarterback that can throw it, you can move that thing back to 40, 42 yards. 35 and a hash is what has worked for us. And again, it's just kind of one of those things you got to get out there as you throw routes on air, take mental note, film those things and see where your balls are landing and develop those landmarks for your kids. All right. So one of the things that we will let this guy do, and it doesn't happen very often, we would like to go ahead and get an inside release. But every now and then you play these quarter teams that they pack it so far inside that we will go ahead and let him best release outside release deal with the thought of still aiming for our landmark at 35 yards. The one thing where this is coming, again, a lot of this stuff you'll hear me refer back to Coach Dunn. If we were to get an inside press technique, okay, then we'll basically make this 35 yards in the divide. So if we have to go outside of a press corner and work back to stack, we will almost run this thing like a reverse go ball and work to 35 yards on the divide. Quarterback and wide receiver have to be on the same page. All right. So, um, okay. So what we do as a quarterback wise, we come out, we get, you know, again, this is kind of a quarters, too high safety type look. We're getting a feel for the safety where he's at. The higher and wider he is, the more the inside post comes into play. And we almost treat that like a bang eight. I tell that inside guy, if you're getting the ball, it's going to be right out of your break. So when you hit that eight yard and you get your eyes inside, be looking for the ball. It's like a deep slant. We're going to throw you that ball in the window if we, for some reason we were to get like a cover two type look. 
okay? If we do our job and we really drive this thing and the safety holds, okay, then now all of a sudden we're looking to throw this ball out here 35 yards in the divide, all right? So I'm gonna roll into some film clips of this. Here we got it down here at the bottom. This is the year before we kind of got our landmark. So you'll see the ball is kind of all over the place. I wish this wide receiver's alignment would be a little bit wider. He's kind of tightened this thing up. So right now as a quarterback, I got to know if he's not lined up on the numbers, I'm probably going to have to bring this thing maybe just a little bit inside the hash, even though we don't want to. All right, now here's a good look of them. I put this on there just because this is a good reminder for me. They're spinning the coverage right here. So quarterback-wise, you think it's too high. All these defensive guys out there are going to, you know, see this and they're going to say, hey, we've got to, you know, disguise the coverage a little bit. You immediately start feeling this safety tumble down over here. This, the, uh, the safety over the H is the one that we're looking at. All of a sudden, he starts coming down. I got to check the far safety and see if he's coming back. Now my quarterback feels, hey, this is getting ready to roll to one high. Coach has told me play the smash. It's cover three to the top. I've just got to bang the hits. Catch, ball. Okay, and we'll live to live another shot. Okay, so again, I know this is a, a, a shots clinic, but I just I always want to throw that in there because that is day one teaching for us is, hey, don't take a bad play and make it worse. Don't throw a post into the middle of field safety. Just play smash and we'll get to the next spot. All right, so again, you can see the smash outside. All right, so let's get some posts. Here's one from this season. Good alignment out here by the X. We want him on the numbers. Okay, again, we've – Prefer him probably, if, 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 depending on if, if this guy's really going to play some jam man, we would outside release this thing and throw it in the divide. I believe he gets an actual inside release right here. Yeah, okay, so the guy kind of bluffs this, almost causes us to jump off sides. Go press on his toes, 10 yards, stick it, aim for the hash at 35 yards. So, again, this kind of cuts off. Our film's not real good. We snap it from the 49. So, 51, take away 35. We should be catching this thing about the 16. So if I go to the end zone shot of this, you can see right there, all right, we're not bad. We threw a little bit further than that, but his landmark of the hash is pretty daggone close right there, okay? And again, you can see the effect the inside post right here is having on the quarter safety, okay? He's taking him across the field. We're letting it go as a quarterback. Okay, and again, we love throwing posts. And again, these are drop back posts from the pocket. Uh, I'll get you some play action posts here in just a second. Again, here it is down at the bottom. Okay, so we get kind of a quarter safety look. So right now in the quarterback room, we're saying, hey, this guy's kind of low. He's eyeballing two. He's probably going to buy up two. We're taking the post outside. Okay, so again, step on the toes and break. The receiver does a good job of even though he's inside the numbers, hey, work back out to the numbers to create room. So we'd almost call that like a weave post. Attack that guy's leverage outside, stick it. Again, now for us now, the ball is basically on the 40. We would want to throw the same catch it on the five-yard line. Okay, so we're a little right there is about where we would want it. Okay, and kid makes a good play on this thing. And you can see all the room out here created by the quarter safety Okay, jump inside post, and it's mono and mono outside. All right, so, and that's, again, this is big teaching for us because as you see this throughout the, con throughout the, uh, throughout the, uh, the teaching of this, the posts will come into play, okay? So our next one off a of smash, and I'll get to some more post stuff, but we're going to run basically, everybody's doing this, just your simple cop route, okay? So we're going to really take this thing, drive it to eight, and then what we tell the receiver is we want to take three steps. And the key point for us is, is look back for the ball. So many receivers on this double move don't look back for the ball. So look over what would now be your outside shoulder. Look over your outside shoulder back inside at the quarterback to make this safety really drive this route and then snap it off. The other coaching point for us is you have to go underneath the safety. So let's say we're playing Coach Gaylor, and Coach Gaylor knows this is one of our – first install so he's going to tell the safety to really not bite on this corner route until he sees the ball thrown okay well that's okay if we don't get it okay they've done a good job coaching then we want to make this thing flat back across his face and help the quarterback out almost like a dig okay and again our rules still apply okay well what happens if it spins to something funky one high okay well just play smash you learn that day one all right so here's some cop routes down here at the bottom, again, now we get kind of a free access run at the safety. 
the whole key is don't measure this thing. We say eight yards, but we, we basically, when we do this, we'll put a cone out here basically about seven to 10 and say, run full speed and wherever your inside foot hits, break on the corner and then snap it off. So don't measure this thing. Make, make that safety reduce his cushion right here. So again, I think we kind of may see, I don't think this guy's running quite as hard. He's trying to set him up right now as opposed to really run and break this cushion down and make him feel uncomfortable so he feels like he has to jump the corner. Again, there he goes on the corner. Pretty decent job. I wish he could look a little bit more, like look back at the quarterback. Not a very good job right there with his head and eyes. If he would just look back this way, it would make this guy feel like, hey, the ball's probably in the air. I got to break on this a little bit more. And then again, cross his face and work into that hole. All right, let me get to an end zone shot. Now, we talk to the quarterbacks all the time. We usually just – we'll install this with everybody, but we get where we just do this with a couple of kids so the quarterback can get the feel, all right? And we just tell the quarterback, hey, he's taking three steps. So, right here, he's probably breaking on the corner route. We've got to be ready to throw the football. We can't break it when he comes back out to the post, all right, in that window, all right? So, I wish I could have got a little bit better. One. I think I've got a better shot of it. Here's one. Down. Now, now we're working the guy at the top. Price should have had a little bit better split. He probably needs back out here on the uh, inside part of the hash. Again, break this cushion down, all right? Run off the ball, all right? Really threaten the safety. So there we go. Again, not bad right here. Three steps, back inside. And again, now what we would tell the quarterback, I would tell the quarterback right here in the room, when he plants his foot, we need to be ready to throw the football because we know he's going to go one, two, three, and we want to throw him open. So we can see the safety the whole time. We know what kind of what angle it's going to be on coming out of it. So we know this guy's a little bit higher. It's going to be more of a post angle. It's not going to be a dig angle. So let's, let's get ready to throw the football right now. Probably a little late with that one. All right. And in the window. See if we can get a decent shot of it from the end zone right here. All right, again, might have to – this probably is going to be – we practice this as a two ball. So, like, at me as a coach, we do this on routes on air. I'll come out here and I'll stand where the linebackers stand, all right, because, again, a lot of times you may not get a clean window when you want to throw the football. We'd prefer that. We practice these two balls over a second-level defender all the time, throwing this ball down the pipe. Okay, one more again at the top. Okay, now they roll to a middle high safety. Again, putting this one on there just to show you guys you got it. If you're going to do this stuff, I think you have to give your quarterbacks a way out. Don't just throw the cop, throw the cop, throw the cop. This is like a teaching tape for us. And so we know we see that. The cop route's dead. Hey, don't try to force the ball and, and make a bad play worse. It's cover three. Take the hitch down here at the bottom. And again, I mean, he almost gains probably as many yards as the cop route would have gained had we had that just by the quarterback knowing where to go with the football versus the middle, middle close look. All right. Um, okay, so one of the change-ups that we've done off of the – basically kind of the double post is into the boundary because, you know, the double post for us has been more of a field throw. We wanted to be able to threaten the boundary safety and corner. So we basically run a little switch post dig down here. So but naturally into the boundary, they're going to have a little bit tighter splits. So we went ahead and took the H inside. Instead of running him on the post, it was going to be too hard to get him to this landmark. We wanted to buy this safety up. So we said push vertical, snap it across his face. Basically, this guy is going to work off his rear to the numbers, and then he's working essentially his post landmark. And we would actually still say try to stay 35 yards on the hash on the throw right here. One of the other things, this was good, if you run switch verts, it kind of gives them that same feel that it's going to be switch verts. And we did this basically also to get leverage on the corner. So we see inside leverage so much that it's hard to get our pose that we felt like if we switch this thing, then now all of a sudden we could create leverage on the corner and open up the post. So I've got one of these on here. We've got the uh, switch route here at the top. So again, we feel like we're going to get leverage. We get the too high look that we want. So we're on this side. We're going to bring the dig from the outside. He goes first. We really don't care about the underneath coverage. We're trying to get him up on the safety and across the safety space. We tell the, the inside receiver, 
We want you to come right off his butt and be vertical down the numbers. And the whole key to this is, is to be inside the corner. We want to create, you know, our leverage that we want and then snap this thing on the post. So you can see right here the ball's uh, on the 32-yard line. So we should catch this thing really the goal line or just into the goal line. But you can kind of see right here the inside receiver running the switch, does a good job of getting a clean release, has leverage, and then back to his aiming point, all right, which we almost get there again with the switch. Uh, you know, we might have to adjust that landmark, but that's the that's the 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 coaching point for us is aim 35 yards on the hash. That way everybody kind of knows the angle and that kind of thing. All right, so that's a switch vert or excuse me, a switch dig post. Okay, going into some of our play action stuff, and this is where we do it. So again, back to the double post. Nothing really changes on this, okay? So it's still eight yard post, the opposite hash. Okay, we want 35 yards on the near hash. Now we're gonna max protect this deal. So, I mean, it's, it's a run formation look for us. Uh, now what we do is we really don't give the quarterback anywhere to go with the football. We still read this thing the same way. If for some reason we got a high safety, which we very seldom do in this look because we're such a run-oriented team, but if somewhere we were to got one right out of the fake, we could bang this thing in there. But this is really more of, hey, once we're in this, we're running some weak side power and weak side ISO, and we're seeing that teams are taking their overhang and trying to get him in the fit and the safety down low, and we're kind of getting a two-on-two -two type look, then we're going to dial up the double post out here. All right, we're just kind of – Basically, we're – let me get to uh, an end zone shot here real fast, talk about the protection. Ah, can't get it. I'll go back to the, the video. Okay, so off the diagram here. Okay, we're just going to slide this thing back so we can protect four weak. We're going to basically man up the front side, put the fullback on one, just like it would be ISO. After the fake, the tailback's going to have anything off the edge right here. So basically, we can protect four to both sides and let this thing rip. All right, so here's one right here. Quarterback, we're going to reverse out. We reverse out almost all of our running game. So we're going to reverse out right here. Okay, pretty good job by the fake. We want to have one hand to the t one hand to the uh, tailback. We want the ball right in here at our midsection. We kind of want to – we would actually kind of like to follow him a little bit more with our hand, but we get out of this thing a little bit quick. You can kind of see right here at the top, we will actually go ahead and turn kind of back towards the receivers right here instead of turning – back away from them we'll go ahead and turn back inside just because i feel like that gives our quarterback a little bit quicker chance to view what's going on out here so right now after this fake we're finding the safety we kind of already know we got what we want out here all right with two on two the main question is can we get the safety to turn his shoulders with the inside post he does right there we're letting the outside post go right here 35 yards on the hash we bring him probably inside you can see we're bringing him inside too much if that thing were right out here on the hash, about the 15-yard line would be a little bit out of danger zone from the safety. All right, so behind shot, you can kind of see, again, this kind of cuts off. You can see the inside post buying up the inside safety, work to the opposite hash. We should be throwing this thing right here about the 15-yard line on the near hash. We bring him in just a little bit too much. This would be probably a minus on the grading sheet. Just because if this guy was maybe just a tad bit better football player, he could get in here and knock this thing away. So that's why the landmarks are so important for us. It gives us a way to communicate with the guys um, during the game when we're using our sideline replay. So here's another one. Okay, again, the, the thing here that kind of kills us is this guy, you know, when he releases, we want to press the numbers. That way it gives us room to break the post to the hash. Part of the problem with the quarterbacks is not really trusting this thing. When they come inside the numbers, they feel like they've got to bring them back in here. So keep the we want we tell the post, hey, keep out here on the numbers when you break to the hash. All right, again, inside post does a great job of basically buying up the safety, breaking across his face. We got the outside post again. What we want right here, we should let this thing go. He should catch the ball about the three yard line, the hash. Okay, and again. We're bringing him a little inside the hash. I don't like that. Again, I think part of it's just where our, our receiver breaks from, our quarterback kind of trying to gauge that. But we try to practice throwing this thing on the hash. And, again, should have been a touchdown. The guy makes a play on this and breaks it away. 
All right. So now the next one that we'll do is, is we want to basically, if, if we're getting a look where, um, you know, we're in, in an ace set, we're getting basically a safety or a corner down playing in the run fit, and we're kind of getting a quarters type safety look to the field, then we're basically going to run what we would call a bang. And again, this is stolen from OSU, same terminology. We're going to go step on toes, and we're going to run basically 30 to 35 yards to the opposite divide. Okay, so again, where this fits in really well is, again, all week these guys are getting, hey, double post, double post, double post. Hey, safety, you know, I mean, they're going to run basically, you know, the eight-yard post in here with a big post over the top, try to kind of midpoint this, help the corner, and then break on this. Well, now what we do is we're trying to take all the, the basically coverage from this side of the field, make it fit in the run, and then make this safety basically have to defend this route that is all the way across the field, the opposite divide, because we feel like that's pretty tough on those guys to also, if they're being taught, to kind of try to midpoint this post and be across the field, okay? On the outside, we're going to run the big dig, so we're going to push up basically to about 12 yards, speed cut the dig. We want him flat in here, 14 to 15, and he's coming in the quarterback window. For the quarterback, we've come up, and we're basically trying to find this safety on the near hash or whoever this run defender is, it might be the corner. You know, a lot of times we get corner safety, safety. So whoever this player is over here, the secondary guy, if we can get him in the run fit, then we know we're getting the divide, okay? If we were to get a, let's say, a cover three or cover one type look, then we don't feel like we're going to get quite as much of this because there's nothing really to hold this guy. So we're going to go ahead and as we come out of this fake, eyeball this route, knowing that we're probably going to try to hit the speed dig back in behind it. So it's kind of a true one to two progression for us. And again, this is one that we really like to call. We kind of know the look that we're getting. So we can pretty much say, hey, quarterback, we're throwing this bang in the divide. However, we always want to give them routes. We try not to ever say, hey, you're throwing it to him or throw the ball away. We're trying to say, okay, if if for you know it, it's middle to high middle middle of the field closed and he's taking this route, then we're giving him a secondary route to throw the football to. All right. So and again, we can mix up the blocking schemes. I just drew this one. So again, this is a kind of a quarters look, almost a man type look. We feel like it's kind of a quarters look over here. Basically, they're going to take the safeties and play them in the fit over the tight ends, the corner and the safety. Excuse me. So we're going to get both these guys down. We're going to go step on toes, and we're going to try to throw this thing 35 yards in the opposite divide. So, again, we're just basically showing kind of an inside zone boot, pulling up, okay? And, again, out here at the receiver, we're going to push, step on his toes, break this thing, and right now we know we're trying to get to the opposite divide, 30 to 35 yards. And that's where we want the ball thrown. And you can see this safe quarter safety now, I mean, it's not – he's so used to, hey, it's double post, double post, double post. Well, now he's got to cover basically from the college hash all the way out here to the divide. And we really want to separate and burst this thing, and that's a good spot for us to throw the football. Now, you can see if for some reason this guy were in the middle of the field and it went to a one high type look, we're probably not going to get the divide. That's where we would be trying to throw this big dig in these double windows in here. All right, and again, the protection, we're just max protecting this deal. We're going to basically boot this thing. So we're going to full slide the line to the left. We're going to take the back off the edge. So, again, it gives us a good eight-man protection right here. Quarterback's going to show kind of like it's boot, pull up, and there you can see us getting the ball in the divide. Okay, so pretty good look at where we want to throw that thing and, again, how they have to go so far to defend that deal. Okay, here's the actual way that we stole it from OSU, how they run it. It's kind of a 20 personnel. The look that I'm going to show you is an actual incompletion, but I want to give those guys credit because I think this is a really good route. So you start seeing these quarters teams that want to drop the safety down to the sniffer side and man match this thing. So what we're doing over here is we're running a grab. He's basically going to run an eight-yard grab post, and his whole job is to try to hold the safety and the corner. So what we want is we want to play action at the safety have him run fit that thing down in there like Coach Gaylor likes to do. And it used to be Boston run fits. And we're going to take this guy, run him on a post, and really try to grab the safety, knowing the corner's probably going to play man-to-man, -man, and we're going to hold that guy. 
All right, so we're gonna fake this thing in here. All right, and again, over here, it's just bang. So it's no new concept for those guys. Quarterback's gonna pre, kind of get pre-snap read on the safety, feel like he's going down. Same thing for him. If the safety's down, we're throwing the ball in the divide. If for some reason we're to go one high, uh, they were to roll this thing to cover three, we're gonna eyeball this route across the field, thinking we're gonna get the dig on the backside of this. So I'll give you a shot of it again. We don't get this thing, we get pressured. You can see the route develop right here. You can see the safety kind of coming down. All right, to buy up the sniffer. We're gonna go step on toes right here and run this thing to the opposite divide. He's running the grab, trying to hold this safety. He's got the big dig coming back in behind it. Play action, you can see the safety step down. Now let's go buy him up. Right there's the grab. Again, it didn't really affect him quite as much, but the play action got him down. Now we're having to get forced out of the pocket. But you can see where the divide's coming right here. Okay, run away from that thing. And if we don't get pressured out of the pocket right here, good job by them. Okay, our back doesn't fit this thing right inside. All right, but you can see where uh, this route's coming open to the divide. And again, this is one of OSU's favorite routes. And we always look for ways to try to incorporate that thing. Okay, and I think I've got one more shot of this. No, I don't. Okay, so then the next one, again, this is more of a game plan type thing. So nub trips is kind of a big look for us, pin and pull, inside zone, those types of things. So we start getting to where these three, four teams basically will take their safety, their quarters, poach, load, trace safety, whatever you want to call it, and they'll start cheating him across the number three. But a lot of times they still were such a run team that they'll basically have kind of eyes in the backfield to help out over here. Okay, so what we did is basically, again, we kind of faked inside zone, pulled up, full slid everything away from the run action, and basically we said Z top. So basically we were just gonna run this guy straight over the top of everything, thinking if, hey, if we're gonna run inside zone or pin and pull and we can get this safety's eyes in the box at all, then we're gonna come back with play action. Again, to try to give our quarterback another way out, we just tagged smash out here, said, hey, if it's one high, abort the top, and then let's just play smash. Again, kind of your rules, soft corner, throw the hitch, cover one, throw the corner out. All right, so again, we kind of get, this is the guy that we were looking to affect. So we kind of get him eyes in the backfield a little bit, and he kind of hesitates off the play action fake. He's flat-footed probably saw on a play before where he came down and made a tackle for probably four or five yard gain on a play and said, hey, let's come back with Z top. So we play action fake, kind of getting flat footed, take our dude, run him right over the top of this guy, and throw the ball right down the pipe. And again, we kind of hold him up right here a little bit. And I, if I'm not mistaken, again, this was a game plan deal, but I think we gave him basically once you clear the safety, you were a far upright player right here. Okay, run to the far upright because again, we try to give those guys landmarks because I want my quarterbacks when we practice this thing with trash cans to have a real good mental spot of where we're trying to throw that thing. Okay, it's a big play for us, big rivalry game, kind of broke the game open, start of the second half. I think you can get a decent shot here from the end zone. You can see number five right here. And this is what we we're trying to look for when we game plan these things is these guys right here that are flat footed. Okay, so they get kind of flat footed. They're used to playing run, eyes in the backfield. Now they got to go find their guy, and we're over the top. And again, you can kind of get a mental picture right here of kind of where the upright would be. That's where we kind of want him. And again, we kind of lead him probably a little bit further outside than the upright. All right, but again, that was kind of our initial deal. So especially it's big for us when the receivers are in their meeting room, when we decide on the game plan, they're being told something, the quarterbacks are being told something. That way when we get out and throw it, we've got it. Okay, so then – off the play action stuff, we like to basically have a post route and then call the individual the other side. So we could do the uh, thing that everybody kind of does now where they're running the over routes, okay, with the post, reading the near safety, or we could give those guys a stutter. We can give them a comeback. We can kind of tag whatever we want, okay? And so what we tell the quarterback is, if we get the safety down to the post side, we want to throw the post, all right? But let's say for whatever reason they come out and they're spinning the safeties the other way, and so we get a high quarter safety over here, 
Well, now, like I tell them all the time, hey, that's a bad call by Coach Wilkinson. That's two on one. So we're not playing that. So I'm giving you an easy out over here as a one on one route that you can take to this side because they're not going to, they're never going to play us two over two to both sides. Okay. We run the ball too much out of 21 personnel. There's always going to be an eighth guy added to the box. All right. So now we just simply say, okay, where's the eighth guy coming from? Is he coming from the post side? Throw the post. If he's coming from the other side, throw the individual route. So I'll give you some ideas of the individual routes. Here we've got post to the top. And then we've got a stutter go down here to the boundary. So he's going to push up, stutter, and go. Again, we're looking at the safety to the post side right here. Okay, so right now we're getting a pre-snap. He's down over the tight end. We feel like he's probably going to be in the run fit right here. In this case, it looks like both those guys are going to be in the run fit. So now as a quarterback, we're going to play action, fake this thing in. Again, kind of an ISO fake right here, max protect. We're getting both safeties down. Come back out of this thing and throw the post. And again, our landmark kind of gets hosed right here. But again, we're shooting for that 35 yards on the hash. And sometimes we get to the point where, you know, in like our play action stuff, we talk in terms of, man, have a little bit of feel here. See where all this grass is. Let's try not to make, let's try to make their guy go a little bit further. So we still stay with 35 yards, but it's like, okay, quarterback, have a little bit of sense right here. And if you get a little, if you can bring him inside a little bit more to make their corner have to run further, then let's do that. But again, we'll practice this thing. It's always 35 yards trash can on the hash. And again, if for some reason we had a post safety or a quarter safety that was a little bit higher that might be taking this thing away, then down here at the bottom, you can see we've got our one on run route run the stutter go okay and that's where we would have wanted to go with the football for some reason they took away our post okay here it is again now we gave this guy basically a go route at the top we call it win so it's best release win inside or outside we don't care we want you basically on the bottom of the numbers we're going to throw this thing somewhere around 30 to 35 yards on the edge and again at the top we're running post all right again it's best release post Okay, he gives him a little bit of a fake outside right here to go back inside. And then he wins stack. And again, now our landmark's kind of different now because of where we're out on the field with him being on the hash, it's kind of a fill thing for the quarterback and the, and the, the receiver right here. Uh, but again, we're aiming for that spot at 35 yards. And we almost hit him right down the pipe right there. Uh, again, the ball's sound on the 50. If you take 35 away from 50, it's 15. I've been in homeschool with my elementary kids so I'm, I'm pretty good at uh, some of these math problems right now and again we catch that ball around the 15 all right good shot and again we practice these things non-stop okay uh last one I'll get to something else here for you guys okay here's one we're going to motion so now we've got the post at the top and now we're basically running z on the over so again our we're going to find the post safety right now he's looking like he's down but if he were to go high right here and the corner runs off, then we've got the over route working into that area. So again, we're gonna play action max protect. There you can see the over. We're over the top of the safety. So now all we've got to do is basically have a good throw and a catch. We've got ourselves a pretty good play right here. You can see if the safety were really high taking away the post, that over route's working basically this opposite divide in here where we could throw him the football. So again, we're just trying to present different ways to attack the defense to get the same thing. All right, let me, uh, here's one out of bunch. Okay, again, just trying to find different ways. Again, a play action look. We're just running the post down here with the over right here. Again, this is one now. Okay, so down here at the bottom, we get an inside kind of press corner. So we're gonna go outside and. This is one where now we would adjust this thing to throw it in the divide. We say, hey, if we get a press corner and the wide receiver has to release outside, it's going to be really hard versus a good corner to get him all the way back inside of the hash at 35. So now, hey, as we outside release, we're going to adjust this thing and try to throw it out here in the divide now at 35 yards, okay, which we kind of bring him back inside. But we've got that option to where if that guy was really in here in his hip pocket, 
just throw it like a go ball on the divide. It almost comes like a reverse go. And again, that's something we kind of stole from OSU. Again, on this one, this is the one where you can see if the safety were to be high right here, this guy were to really be high, taking this away, we've got the over working into the divide in the quarterback's hill division. Okay, so then the other way is we like, so we throw so much post, so much post, so much post, that then we like to tag the individual with the over instead of the post with the over, now it's the individual with the over. So our favorite one is to run a post corner. So when those safe corners really start jumping the post, then we'll break it on the post and then come back out of that thing like a post corner. We'll also, if we're just getting some inside almost man-to-man -man, or if it's like a press uh, cover four type look, and they're just saying, hey, we're going to put our corner inside, not let you run the post. Then we'll run that win route that we said, hey, we're just going to run a go. We're going to throw the ball 35 yards down the field on the edge. Okay, and usually with those now, we'll tag it with the over if for some reason we're getting – two over one, the over's working back into the quarterback's vision. Okay, so here's some, so down here, uh, we've got the over right here. He's got the cut split. He knows he's working to the opposite divide. Down here, we're gonna work a post corner on this corner right here again. So it's play action, quarterback, find this thing, get your eyes down here. We're probably too quick with this. This is early in the season. So what we'd like him to do is break this thing and go three to five with my eyes on the post and then come back out of this. We're a little bit too fast right here. But you can see if we were to take two more steps, the corner is running the post route for us. So, you know, earlier in this game, we probably hit them with the post and they said, hey, you've got to run the post because you're not getting any help inside. Well, now we want to use his technique against him and break this thing back outside. Again, for us, quarterback, we want to drive this thing because we know there's probably no underneath coverage. All those guys are in the run fit. So we want to drive this thing and put on the quarterback. This isn't something we'd want to float and let the corner get back in on this, okay? And so, again, not a very good ball right here, not a great route. But you guys can kind of see the concept. And, again, trying to give you guys some ideas of how we always try to carry multiple ways in to attack the defense, okay? Because those defensive guys are smart. It's not like back in the old days when I was – you know, running air raid against a 4-4 cover three and just, you know, it was like shooting fish out of a barrel. Now they change coverages and actually coach those guys, all right? So here's one now where we're getting a, kind of a man look out here. So we just said, hey, you've got to win. It's a best release, go ball. We're trying to throw you the ball out here, 35 yards in the edge. We're going to tag this thing with an over. So if for some reason we got some type of a too high safety look, we would be working this guy in the opposite divide. Again, something we haven't had to do a bunch because, again, this is what we normally see. We used to normally see nine, ten guys in the box. All right, so, again, right here at the top, he wins. Okay, we want to throw this ball in the edge where we're still – going back to my air raid roots, we still do pat and go. This is our over-shoulder pat and go throw right there in the edge. Okay, so – Beautifully, I mean, really well thrown ball. Again, we shoot for 35 yards in the edge. That's a pretty close to 35 yards. Okay, and again, that's something that doesn't just happen. I mean, that's during special teams, us taking the trash can or the Gilman net down and dropping these balls in. The quarterbacks, again, feel like it's monotonous sometimes. But again, that was the state championship game backed up from two years ago, dropping this ball in the bucket. He'd probably done this 100 times an individual during, that, during the course of that season. Okay, uh, all right, Good. a couple more here. So, again, we're, again, back to our deal, play action. We run a lot of, you know, basically old naked, naked play stuff. So, you know, what we want to do is, again, you know, knowing how these defensive guys coach this thing, I mean, they're basically knowing, hey, as soon as it's naked, we're jumping crossing routes, okay, and they're playing the routes for you. Everybody's matching everything, even our naked stuff. So we said, okay, let's take this thing and let's show naked and let's pull up and let's throw the backside post. And, again, this is something we'll carry, you know, once every three to four weeks just to make defensive coordinators think about it. Okay, so it's nothing different than your normal naked. We're just telling the fullback, hey, instead of going out like on our split zone naked, we're just holding you in right here, blocking the C gap. Everybody else fake it. Quarterback, pull up deep in the pocket. And that's one of the things that I think, 
you know, we talk about is don't be in a hurry. Well, how can we not be in a hurry? Because they're so used to after the fake getting with to try to get outside the defensive end that we talk in terms of after the fake to make it look like it's naked, work for depth, okay? Because as they see depth, they're, you know, teams are going to start matching the naked. They really don't – they just see you moving with the football. They can't really tell in space from that far away where it's going to be. Now, these guys actually play this one pretty well. Uh, again, this is just kind of a game plan deal for us. It was going to be, hey, we're pulling up, and we are throwing the backside post, okay? What we had hoped to do was that most people do, they screw this guy down, and he buys up the tight end, okay? So you can kind of see right here. This guy's thinking wide open, but again, this was a game plan deal for us. We're going to throw this backside post, let it go. We wanted to put it on film so our guys that we were going to play on down the road had to work on this stuff. Okay, so some double move stuff. All right, so again, this is the last one I'll let you guys go with here, and we'll take any questions or vouch you want me to keep going, we'll keep rolling, okay? So we became kind of a big spacing team with double slants on the backside. And again, this is one that you've got to kind of find who can run this route, okay? So people started taking the field, field corner and really driving hard on the slant. He was the guy, the safety it seemed like, wasn't making the play as much as the corner basically meeting us where the, the, the uh, throw was meeting a receiver and knocking this thing down. So we said, okay, we're gonna drive off this thing three step, break it on the slant. And then we're going to jump back outside. And so this was kind of a bigger red zone type route for us, okay? And even though this is shots, this is kind of, for us, a red zone shot, if you will. Again, quarterback, let's say it's just something you didn't like. The corner was out here for some reason at 11 yards. Well, again, kind of going back to the safety blanket, spacing is a day two install for us. So this is something that we feel like we can throw versus almost anything. We got it. If we were to get blitz from the field, then we give them basically they could always go back to this inside slant. So uh, let me coach this up a little bit on the film. So, again, we're kind of getting down the fringe of the red zone, getting a quarters type look. We felt like this guy was going to bite on the slant. We could jump back outside. We were going to try to throw this thing on the numbers. So you can see what we tell the quarterback is we really want to stare this thing down and pump it, reset our feet, and throw. So we really want to look out here at the slant, pump that thing. Okay, so he's buying this up. We're back outside. Let it go. Okay, again, we get that thing on the bottom of the numbers. We don't quite score. I think if we have a better ball, we have a chance right here. Uh, again, but it was just this guy was really good at the route. Uh, here it is again down here at the bottom. Now it's a three-by-one type look. Okay, we've got a little bit different route concept here at the top. Okay, we said, hey, if we're getting like a quarters type look right here or man, we're going here, okay? If for some reason we get two over one, so we get a clouded look down here, then we're running three down the middle of the field off the Mike linebacker and running a pivot look out here that we can work back to one, two to the pivot, three to the dig. So again, trying to build those spots for the quarterback. Here it is again, you can see down here at the bottom, Okay, I wish he would have – he thinks he's getting pressed, so he thinks he's got to really win inside. What we tell those guys versus press is, you know, hey, as soon as you stick this thing, get to the slant as fast as possible. We want that guy running the slant for you and then really bring that guy inside and then put on the brakes and jump back outside. So you can see he's working inside, gets him to fill back outside, and, again, well-thrown ball right here. All right, so one more look at these. So we're rolling here to the top. Vass, do I have time for one more? Yes, sir, you do. All right, beautiful. Okay, so here's the double slam at the top. Okay, we're going to jump him in and then back outside. So there he goes in, right back outside. All right, touchdown. So, again, kind of a goal line kind of shot for us. I'm going to skip through this, so I want to give you guys just kind of a game plan type deal for us. Let me get out of this. I want, I've got kind of a specific one in mind. Okay, so we played, again, this is, we're playing union, nub tight ends, big for us. We had noticed, and I'll show you the clip of this, we ran same side power, and we noticed the extra fitter was the corner, okay? So basically, 
we determined was his read was when this tight end blocked the, the Sam linebacker, in this case, the outside linebacker, he was fitting, okay, so they could fit two guys on our, on our puller. Good defensive, good defensive game plan, very sound. So what we said was, after we saw it, we said, okay, the second time we played him, hey, let's block this guy with your eyes on him. When he fits, you go. So it's like old school pop pass. So again, just kind of a game plan, our thought process deal. Over here, we basically said, hey, let's go four verts. Okay, let's put you down the pipe, though. You're not working the opposite hash. We don't want to take you by the play. Go right down the pipe, right down the hash, basically right down the numbers. And we told the quarterback, hey, if we get something, you know, get something crazy over here, two over one, you're almost going to play this thing like four vertical. One, two, three, like we do. But we felt pretty good about this. So just kind of give you guys – so this is game – this is our first game against Union. Okay, we're watching this corner and the tight end and watch how they fit basically our power play right here. So right here, the tight end engages, corner's feeling, feeling. They're going to basically spill this thing to the corner, him make the play on one back power. Okay, so again, we don't have any answer for that. We can't block that guy. Okay, so that's when the, kind of this idea was born. We thought, hey, if we play those guys again, we're going to run it. So this is – Late in the game, playoffs, same look. We substituted a, a safety in here that had a little bit better hands than our tight end. Okay, we're going to block him with our eyes on this corner. We see him fit. Now we're going to release and go. Kid makes a great catch, gets us back in the football game. So, again, that was kind of a game plan deal. I got one clip of that. But those are the types of things that we work. I know you get defensive guys that ask, don't think we work a whole lot. You think we just go out there and throw mesh. And used to, everybody said we just do recess for practice. But Oh, not me. <laughs> I have respect. I have respect. That's fake news. I got you. I think Gaylor does that. I think Gaylor always, when we worked together, Gaylor was always the guy that was always writing down what time we went home. And if we didn't score enough points, then it was always, well, you guys went home too early on, on Sunday. So, but those are the kind of things that we try to pride ourselves in working really hard uh, on the weekends is, you know, understand exactly how the defense is going to fit. Because if you go into a game and you think you're going to have equal numbers against a really good defense, they're always going to steal guys. So how can we do that? And I know the RPO world's kind of changing some of that. We're not an RPO world team. So for us, it's been more play action. And when we throw play action, we want to score touchdowns. We want to put those guys in a bind. We don't want to throw it out there for three and four yards. We want to, if we're throwing it, we want to basically, even if we don't complete it, we want to put the fear of God in those guys that, hey, the very next series, they might come back with that again. So we need to make sure we're playing over the top. So hopefully you guys got something out of it. Let me uh, get back to the beginning here. and I'll put my email up there. Feel free to email me. I'll be glad to send you guys any of this stuff. Um, you know, I appreciate what Glacier Clinics Vast is doing. Uh, everybody's doing just, you know, this time where we're all stuck at home. It gave me a break from basically being a homeschool teacher. I've got four kids, and uh, they're kicking my butt with this homeschool stuff. So, uh, but that, that's my info. If I can ever be of help, you guys feel free to reach out. Uh, again, none of, it, of this was Jay Wilkinson or Broken Arrow created. Everything is – borrowed stolen or something like that and so uh that's the that's the bad thing about this corona break has been I've, I've been able to talk to so many people and and uh view so much new stuff that i've got to determine okay what what can we do and what we can we not do within our offense because i got a lot of good ideas to attack these ever-changing defensive guys awesome thanks jay appreciate you